summer's evening, rural area, kids go playing out. Somebody cruising around, an opportunist, could have been there. Could be one of these individuals who've been caught on surveillance, or it could be somebody else, right? Obviously, only the police investigation knows that. Only the police investigation knows that. So, <coughs> excuse me, if we zone out here a little bit, and then we just look at the topography in a little bit more detail. This whole area is flat. This is not Rogersville. This is not rural East Tennessee, where it's just treacherous terrain. This is flat farmland, right? For miles, you'd, you'd have to go miles north or miles east to get to the hills, to get to where it's higher. If you stay on this plateau here, right? And in the early days of the searches, they were combing these cornfields because this, this was a cornfield. This was a cornfield. I remember the, um, the kind of local news stations. I remember them um, standing there and with, with like a cornfield in the, in the background. So they comb those fields. So easy areas for tracker dogs. Easy areas for tracker dogs. Easy to see if there's any crawl spaces or, um, you know, dangerous places where a child might go. Now, there, there might be drainage ditches. There might be sheds, lockups, things like that, that a kid can get themselves injured and locked into. But we would hope that the entire neighborhood helped out there. It's only a very small neighborhood. And if we just saw now a little bit, this for miles and miles and miles is a flat plateau. However, if you do this and you do this and this and this, and then zoom back in, I was shocked when I saw the size of this cliff. Brandy said there was a cliff. She's not joking. This is a cliff. Right? If you look at it side on. Uh, I need to just move it. Hold on a minute. That way. Look at that. So it's flat for miles eastwards, northwards, southwards. And then just outside Michael's home, and Michael's home's here, there's this cliff. Now, this cliff is about 25 metres high. If you look at the elevation, it's about 25 metres high, which is about 80 feet, something like that. Now, I would imagine in the early days of that search, one of the first places they would have gone is all along the bottom of this cliff, right? That would be the obvious place if a little boy wandered out and was just playing around in the fields, came upon this cliff, tried to get down the cliff. I probably would have tried to get down this cliff when I was five. I would have scooted on my bottom. Did anybody do that? You scoot down on your bottom. But that is about 25 metres, about 80 feet. I can tell, I don't know whether I can, it's, if you can see right down at the bottom there where it says elevation, if I put my cursor at the top there, it's 680 metres there at the top. And then if I put my cursor at the bottom, it's 655 metres elevation. So that's an elevation rise of 25 meters, around 80 feet, if not more, if not more in some places. But given the amount of resources, given the amount of time, given the amount of outside help they had, the 10 dog teams that in just four days, they'd got 10 dog teams out there, right? 
given the amount of just the Fruitland police have been fantastic in just throwing as much help as they could get at this case. Even though social media hasn't talked about it heavily, the community, the police, have been working this case consistently, right? So <clears throat> this cliff goes all along, all along here. And then it's another flat plain for miles. <clears throat> I, um, I measured this last night because I'm, I'm interested in topography. I'm interested in maps and things like that. I'm interested in like prehistoric events. And this is almost like a crater. It's about six miles by six miles before you get to the west where it starts to go higher again. And I thought, I wonder whether that was a great lake, like in prehistoric times, whether that was a great lake that has etched out this, this massive cliff. I don't know. I just like this kind of thing, so I don't know. Um, but what do we have, right? What, what else do we have, right? So we've got an 80-foot drop, and then we've got a flat plane. But to get uh, Chris spent some time asking Brandy about the river because, you know, anybody who's looked at this map will think, oh, God, you know, look, the Snake River, it's a dangerous river. The Snake River is less than a mile from Michael's house, easily. But to get to it, you've got to cross this highway, right? Unless... You go all the way up here, and then you can get to the river without having to cross the highway. However, Michael was last seen at 6.45 here, heading east. He wasn't heading towards the river. So I'm 99.9% .9 sure that Michael did not go this way then this way, and decided not to go to the splash pad, instead decided to double back on himself and go to the river and fall in. I can't imagine a child doing that. If he got out of the house and was heading east, and we know that he's previously gone to the splash pad, when he's got out on his own, he's gone there, why would he decide not to go there and instead go to the river? I don't know. I don't know. But Brandy has said that the river was searched. Right? I don't know how well they can search a river because it's fast flowing. Right? But presumably, if Michael, in a fluke accident, had fallen into the river and the current had taken him away, I'm pretty sure his body would have been discovered by now. Like after all this time, if we were still in the first week or two, I would say, look, there's a strong possibility that he could have done something unexpected that children sometimes do strange things, sometimes do unpredictable things, right? And is it possible that instead of going to the splash pad, he decided to have an adventure and he went this way and fell in the river. In the first two weeks, I, I would have easily said, yes, it's possible. But after all this time, wouldn't his body have been caught on reeds, been, been caught on something, been seen by somebody? I think so. That's why I'm now 99.99999% sure that Michael was abducted. The final thing I want to show you about this map and the thing that always concerns me when I see this, always concerns me, is concerned me about the Summer Wells case and it's concerned me about this one, that Fruitland is less than a mile away from the state line. The Snake River is the state line. So east of the river is Idaho, west of the river is Oregon.